Thanks for staying with us on the Sportsmax Zone as we race across to athletics. Many Caribbean high schools are in Philadelphia this week for the Penn Relays, the oldest and largest track and field competition in the United States. But while the 128-year-old event focuses on relay rivalry, there is a relatively new meet that's geared toward individual clashes. We are talking about the East Coast International Showcase. The third staging of the meet is set for Saturday, the 4th of May at the Prince George's Sports and Learning Complex in Landover, USA. This year, the meet will have over 1,200 high school athletes from six countries, the USA, Jamaica, Canada, the Cayman Islands, Haiti, and Belize. And it has already confirmed a plethora of high school stars from those nations. Joining us via Zoom to tell us more, former world and Olympic mile relay medalist for Jamaica and CEO and founder of the East Coast Track and Field, Sanjay Ayer. Sanjay, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Great to have you on the show to talk about this yeah, event. Thank, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, let me start here. The past two stagings of this event, can you compare what happened then and what you expect for the third staging and how the meet has grown over the years? Yeah, well, this is our third year of the meet. Um, I did not expect the meet to, you know, grow at this rapid rate. Um, the meat has really taken off. Our first year was a bit slow. We had, we had to work through the kinks um, of really just getting through with the competition. That year we had some bad weather. We didn't have a lot of sponsors. Um, the second year, which was, you know, 2023, the meat grew immensely and it, it just took off. Um, we had a lot of high school world leads um, from Quincy Wilson in the 400. Um, from Ising uh, 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 Ayaga, um, Alana Reed won the 100. She ran 11.00 seconds. Um, and it was this amazing competition. This year, the reception has been great. Um, with one week to go for the entries to be closed, we have 100 high schools confirmed. Um, we have six foreign countries um, that are on hand um, for this year. And the meat has thus grown immensely. Um, the support we've been having from the diaspora, from the Caribbean, Jamaica, has been great in the DMV area. Um, and we're looking for a packed house um, next Saturday, May 4th. Yeah, can you talk to us about the timing of the event? Because it comes just a week after the highly popular pen relays. I suspect some of the athletes will do both events. Is it that they would like travel home and come over to to your meet, or will they just make the transition from Philadelphia there? Yeah, well, it's a mixture of both um, for the foreign athletes. So some would have traveled from Penn Relays. We have nine teams that are traveling from Penn Relays. They arrive in Maryland on Sunday, this Sunday, and we will host them for a one-week training camp um, in Columbia, Maryland. Then we have additional schools come in on Wednesday. They arrive um, from Jamaica. We have Titchfield High School that's flying in on Wednesday. Then our Canadian teams are flying in on Thursday. The, the Haitian team, Belize, um, and the Cayman Islands arrive on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I see that you have 1,200 athletes. That sounds like a lot. And because you already yeah. mentioned that, you know, things started out a bit slowly first year and then the second year. But this this is a, a huge number, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Um, it's just the, the, the planning and the concept that I've put together. You know, it's built as a clash, individual clashes. Um, USA versus Jamaica versus the rest of the world. People don't, the fans don't get to see this type of competition unless they're at the U20 Pan Ams or the World Juniors, you know? Um, so I'm giving them a product that has never been seen before and just having the different countries come and we, we, we haven't asked anyone to pay, you know, so we have come and sponsor every single team, every single foreign team that's attending the meet. We have paid for everything um, as a complimentary. We have set up a scholarship fund for all the athletes that, that have come 
And, you know, people, people love the concept. The athletes love it. Um, and it, it has been a, a big hit. The, the meat has grown rapidly, and we expect it to even get bigger and better with more sponsorship support that's coming on board. Yeah, and has it been a difficult process attracting sponsors um, based on the fact that the meat has been growing? Yes, absolutely. It, it, it's been quite difficult. Um, we have a three-year sponsorship agreement with Puma, who is the title sponsor. This is the last year of the, the sponsorship deal. Um, I started the meet by getting sponsors who are friends, you know? So I went out to, to business owners who are friends of mine and I asked them to donate. Um, and, you know, they've been there from the start. But now we're getting the bigger sponsors to come on board because they love what we're doing. They see the performances of the athletes. Um, companies want to give back to these foreign athletes. Um, so next year, every year we're just, we're growing bigger and bigger and bigger. But next year, I, I see where we could attract at least three big corporate sponsors. Right. And you know, you mentioned the scholarship fund, the East Coast scholarship fund that are available to the athletes. Can you tell me a bit more about it and how does one qualify? So, so we have two, two scholarships um, available. The first scholarship is we have the businesses they put in their donation and a little bit of do that donation we give to the kids so they're here for the whole week. So the whole week covers the, the one week training camp, okay? Um, and I could tell you now, the one week training camp that we're having, you know, we're looking at over 100 Jamaican athletes. Um, we put them in a hotels for the week. We feed them um, medical service. We have um, university collegiate coaches come in to recruit the athletes while they are at the camp. Um, each each athlete is going to take between seven hundred and fifty dollars to a thousand dollars to sponsor them for the whole week. Um, and then after the event is done, I am going to award maybe two to three schools um, individual scholarships for athletes to take care of them. Um, as, as they're getting ready for the boys and girls champs, um, which would offset, offset some of their training costs, some of their accommodations for school, um, to pay for them for their education, tuition for their respective high schools. Um, so th those are the scholarships that are, that are created for the, for the kids. Right, and you, you just spoke about the uh, U.S. collegiate coaches that come and of course, you know, would look at the athletes, whoever they're interested in and all that. Um, based on the first and second year, were they interested in um, numerous athletes based on the quality that would have been sh um, on display at the meet? Yes, absolutely. Um, various athletes that competed at the meet got signed to American universities. Wow. Athletes that would not have been seen if they weren't scouted because a lot of colleg American collegiate coaches they don't come to the Boys and Girls Championships. So, you know, they, they're here in America. It's an easy trip for them from whatever universities they are in. And also, it gives the Jamaican athletes a bigger platform here in America because the U.S. media is at the meet. And they're getting a first-hand look at, at what the Jamaicans have to offer and what the other foreign athletes have to offer. Yeah, I'm interested to find out, though, Sanjay, because... You came through the ranks as a, as a junior athlete in Jamaica. Um, I think you represented Excelsior and Canabar. Yeah, and then and Heidel. And, and Heidel and on yeah. to Auburn University. So you've been through the process of a developing athlete. What has inspired you to put so much effort into a meet like this to, to you know, give a, a platform for some of these young, talented athletes? Well, most of all, I, I wanted to, to, to make sure that Jamaica continues to have a strong junior program um, because having a strong junior program would translate into good Olympic athletes, good senior athletes. Um, and I wanted to make sure that athletes who don't have the privilege of making a national team that they would continue to have high level international competition that would help them to look forward to something that would help with their development. So that was my thought process, you know, 
in the planning stage, in the, in the first initial planning stages of the meet. Yeah, and great to see that you've um, brought in Caribbean schools in this project, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and, and Haiti. Um, any likelihood in the coming years that more uh, countries, more countries from the Caribbean could be a part of this process? Because, as you yes. know, there's a, there's a lot of talent right throughout the Caribbean. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Of course, you know, we're in our third year, and, you know, we're not for profit right now. We're really trying to give back to the country. But the more sponsorship we get, the more we could give back, you know, to these different high schools, to these smaller Caribbean islands to bring them in. You know, when you, when you look at a meet like the Penn Relays, for example, you know, high schools who go to the Penn Relays, they, they would have to fund their own self to go. Their parents would have to come up with money to buy their airline tickets, to pay for hotels. Alumni would have to raise money to give back to the school. My organization, Two Eagle Sports, we are going out and we're getting the sponsorship and we are paying for all the kids to come. So, yes, the, the resources are limited. We hope to get to a point where schools could start paying their way to, to, to come to the meet and, and support the meet. Um, long term, the model that we have now probably won't be sustainable from a, from a financial perspective if everyone wants to come. Um, but we are trying our best to help as much people as we possibly can. Um, and hopefully it could impact some lives. Well, Sanjay, I'm certainly happy that you've been able to put this out here globally yes. because the Sports Mac Zone has a global audience because what you're trying to do here um, has to be rewarded. This is a, a colossal effort that you're, you're putting up here. And uh, I'm hoping that um, out of this interview, you will attract some more attention and some more sponsorship for this project because it does appear as if the sky's the limit and you're offering something that isn't, isn't normal. Yes, it, 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 it isn't normal. You know, and, you know, the success of the meet, if you go back and you look at the results from last year, you know, we have, for the men's 100, we had 10-1, 10-15, that one, Alana Reed ran 11 flat, Quincy Wilson ran 46 low. So the results are really on par with the Boys and Girls Championship. What I've done is I have went out and I've recruited the top American athletes. So... I would look at the, the championship athletes that won the Nike Indoor Nationals or the New Balance Indoor Nationals. That's the U.S. version of boys and girls champs. Um, and getting those good American athletes to clash with our Jamaican kids, our top kids, you know. I think people love that USA versus Jamaica individual matchup. Um, and, and after last year, the sponsors were like, wow. This is a big product. We want to be associated with this. Um, so many years to come, my ultimate goal is for this meet to be a carnival, probably on the lines or the same level as the pen relays. And we could call this our own as, as, as a Jamaican owned um, and having our Jamaican athletes who started and participated in this venture in the early years and, and many years to come. Yeah, Sanjay, I want to congratulate you for the effort that you're putting into this project and the immense strides that it has made in the few years that you've, you've had it, you know, on, on the calendar. And we wish you all the best for your event next weekend. And we hope, stroke, expect that it will continue to grow. Thanks, Sanjay. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, OK, that's a, a tremendous uh, event there coming up in Maryland next weekend. And uh, so many outstanding junior athletes from across the region uh, up against uh, top stars from the USA as uh, high school stars. We go to break when we come back. Still a lot more to come on the Sports Max Zone, including a tremendous story of some young footballers uh, back in Jamaica from Europe having great experience there. And that big story coming from the Jamaica Conference Center, where there's a new president of the Jamaica Cricket Association. We'll be back with more on the zone after this.